key about all of this stuff is that it needs to be self-replicating. There's like, we can only do so much ourselves. We need to actually teach other people and equip them and train them like Jesus said to, so that they can do the same thing and this just keeps snowballing and growing. Yeah, that's right. So I think we've, we've sometimes seen discipleship programs and so on that are so complex that they work for the teacher and they work for the recipient, but the recipient is not quite sure what's happened to them in such a way they can pass on. So one of the things we've been doing is working really hard on creating simple ways to engage with the Bible and learning simple ways of discipling others so that they can actually know what's happened to them and pass it on. And that's the self-replicating piece. It's the piece where we dream of others encountering Jesus beyond our networks, but through other contacts and other people and so on. I, I remember saying once that to someone that we're like, you know, the six degrees of separation. Who knows, we may contact someone in a government far away through three three touches of this kind of discipleship. Yeah. Anyway, a guy, Sorry. a guy came up to me and said, um, funny you should say that, but we've got contact in a very high level of an Asian government and that person's been talking to the leader of that government. And it was an example of how discipleship can quickly step up to impact the world yeah. when it's done in a self-replicating way. Absolutely. I think the key with what we're talking about around this too is that it's not just about the how do I pray and lead someone into you know, giving their life to Jesus, but it's important at that point in time that we don't just drop and run. It's, yeah. not, it's not, yeah, I got someone across the line and yeah. walk away yeah um like the key is actually following up and doing yeah. the discipleship and yeah. you know making sure that we nurture and care for them <clears throat> and help them to be established yeah in the kingdom jesus said for us to make disciples that know how to follow and obey him he didn't say do evangelism he said he invites us to do the whole thing, I think. So Jeff and Mary, who we're about to visit, are going to introduce us to the postcards. But the postcards are just a little tool to help uh, the conversation begin in terms of opening the Bible and setting up things in a genuine conversation, allowing the Spirit to lead us into what he's wanting to say. Yep. Let's go visit them. Uh, yeah, when I was 20, I met a girl at a party who came to our place to ride a horse we had. She refused the helmet I offered her and then fell off and was unconscious for five days with serious injuries. And during that time, I faced the question, am I going to be responsible for somebody's death? And I had no grid for that. Anyway, five days later, she did regain consciousness and told me she thought she was responsible for it, not me. And she said, anyway, there are more important things than that. And I said, such as what? And she said, such as Jesus. And I said, what's he, what's he got to do with it? Anyway, I went home and I thought, I've got to know about this Jesus. And as I was reading the Gospels, I, could, I, I felt this is either completely true or it's all, all rubbish. It's either one or the other. And then I read the bit where Jesus said, I'll reveal myself to anybody who loves me and obeys me. So I went to church that night and I had an just amazing encounter with God's love and I gave my life to him on the spot. And uh, after that I realised uh, that he died for my sin and um, so I asked him to forgive me for ignoring him for all my life and for some of the specific things that were really weighing on me. He did and I got free. Um, then I realised that he'd given me his Holy Spirit to live in me so I didn't have to try and do it all on my own. He was going to do it in me. That was such a relief. Then, so over the years, God has given me an amazing wife and two children who all who love God with all their heart. And uh, we've gone up many blind alleys searching for more of him. But uh, I now realise that my worth to him 
doesn't depend on what I do, but on what he thinks of me. And he loves me. I love him. Um, I was very fearful, insecure and lacking in self-confidence. But I came to a place where I had to face also what um, was giving me security in life when my family went away. And I decided to go to the local church and I just was taught there that I needed to be a Christian. I needed to read the Bible and pray every day. And amazing, God answered some of my prayers. But I discovered later this really wasn't what Christianity was. I was invited to a conference um, the following year in January and I heard the gospel preached in a way that had life that I didn't know was there and I was encouraged along with others in that conference if I hadn't committed my life to Christ to do so. So I felt I needed to be honest. I hadn't prayed anything like that. So I asked Jesus to forgive my sin and to be my saviour and Lord. And nothing dramatic happened that I knew of, but a deep sense in my heart that I knew Jesus was real. I knew he was with me. I knew he knew me. And um, I, I just, my life just took off after that. Well, uh, about oh, nine years ago, Mary and I um, started in, uh, an international student ministry at Monash University and we quickly realised that our job was not to uh, do the ministry but it was to, but the, the students were the ones who needed to be encouraged and given confidence to reach out to their friends themselves and um, we, we knew by then also that what was vital was that they lead people, their friends to Jesus and disciple them themselves so in such a way that that friend can then lead somebody to Jesus and disciple them just as it, they'd had done for them. Uh, and uh, over the time that we were there, uh, we actually saw that happening and happening most wonderfully. Um, we realised that an important part of that was that they have confidence. It was, uh, it was a thrill too when to see these students that when they went home, uh, they would share with their parents and with their friends and uh, uh, a number of them saw their parents come to Christ. And just two, two days ago, we heard that one of them, her father, has now come to Christ as well. And that's fantastic, that completes the family. Uh, and um, we also heard that they were then we were translating the material um, so they could so their mum could use it with her friend and that was happening so there was this multiplication happening even though we didn't see it at uni um, we didn't have to I think that's the important thing too that it, you don't have to keep back coming back to the mothership for this movement to absolutely fly mm. yeah I believe I mean, this was Jesus way this is what he did um, he didn't try and do all the ministry himself most of what he did was demonstration so his disciples could do it. And I reckon that's what God is wanting us to all get that picture, get that mindset, that heart and run. And um, I can see God doing that. Um, people do need confidence though. And I, I really love to see them so equipped like Jesus did with his disciples, um, both in how to, but and also, of course, in the absolute release of the Holy Spirit. Can't wait for God to do that. But Jesus did spend three years teaching his disciples. It wasn't just the release of the Spirit only. That sat on top of what else he did with them. So I can't wait to, be, to see that happening, to be involved in it. <laughs> Wonderful. If we leave it to... Um teachers, staff, um, or just a group of people in the church, um, it gets overwhelming. The numbers can be too big. People get overloaded. And I, I think Jesus said, um, when he said to believers make disciples of all nations, he didn't mean just a few. He meant 
for each of us be able to give a simple account and to be able to um, help that person get established in walking with God. So um, I think um, we need to help people to be able to um, take that step. Yeah, I found um, that uh, to really, um, well, to really love that person, to really believe in them, to really um, see the, the gold in them and, and, and to keep um, uh, moving with them to bring that out. Uh, in most cases, almost all cases, I found they responded and the result was just glorious and uh, we got life friends out of that. So yeah, it's, it was worth persevering, although it was difficult all right and there were times when you thought, is this guy going to make it? <laughs> and you think, yeah, he is. I, I know he is, you know, and, uh, and they all did, all of them. Intense. Uh, uh, <laughs> it was uncomfortable and yet appealing at the same time. Um, the fact that the person who discipled me was so intentional about believing me very specifically, even when, and especially when I didn't believe in myself, it was off-putting and yet so inviting as well uh, to have um, to have something I'd not really ever had before. Someone consistently choosing the best for me and and not having an agenda uh, attached to it of just I want what's best for you and I'm here to help you succeed no matter what that looks like. I'm investing in you. Um, I see a call of God on your life. The consistency of that, not just the words, but backing it up with actions behind it. Um, it was uncomfortable and yet it was very appealing at the same time. I have learned that you don't need to have it all together to disciple other people. Um, I have learned that messiness and untidiness is actually okay, um, that there's no requirement of it being picture perfect to make it work. It, there's, it's not always going to be nice squared edges and uh, straight lines. It's going to be messy and blurry and funky and there's going to be good times and painful times and but it's actually all okay in the midst of all of that. Um, that faith doesn't need to have arrived to a certain point to then be replicated. Um, that authenticity itself is what's appealing. Um, so even if you're authentic in the mess, people can still learn from that. Um, and you get to learn from that in the process as well. I was included in so many ways. I think probably one of the biggest ways was there was a lot of contact um, initially. Um, there was investment in terms of um, monetary ways, not, not in the sense that they gave me money, but, you know, they'd take me out for dinner, they'd take me out for lunch, you know, and times when I'd try and, you know, um, shoulder my fair share, that kind of thing. Um, it was explicitly stated like, no, I'm investing in you, not just um, in friendship or in, in time, but also uh, monetarily, uh, my disciple, mentor, um, helped me find employment as well. Uh, couple of jobs and then ended up employing me themselves which was awesome um, challenging but awesome I was invited into their home um, was welcomed into their world and into a, a friendship um, that I didn't expect uh, a discipleship my previous understanding was a bit more prescriptive of and uh, instructive of I tell you to do this you tell me your problem it was a little bit more uh, like a counselor relationship and you know set time and that kind of thing so to have um, genuine access to their life like you know I knew that if I needed to call at stupid o'clock in the morning because I was in trouble I knew that I could um, I was aware that you know they had their own world and their own commitments and so forth and and so they may not necessarily get up and come meet me wherever I was should I need it but I knew that I could always call that I wouldn't end up with a harsh word on the other end or a or a um a comment you know passive aggressively saying oh you know well, some of us have things to do in the morning like I just I knew that I was safe um with them that their intentions were always good um, in that way. 
the fact that it's become a covenant friendship, a lifelong thing. Uh, it's not just um, somebody who mentors me. It's not just someone who disciples me. It's someone who's not just a friend. You know, I'm now part of the family. It's that. It is that covenant. It's that commitment. It's that um, that intentionality of connection. They yeah. just have such a heart for people. Yeah. And to see people grow and develop, like they really want to take people from, you know, where they start out and just see them get set free and and then launch out and lead others as well. So yeah. Absolutely. Great. Absolutely. So I mean that captures something. Speed hump. No, I'll go over this one. I don't like to eat them too hard. It's bad for my suspension. So we had, before before the Discovery Bible Study, we had some other tools that we were using for people to take those early steps in discipling their friend. But what we found was that all of a sudden, people had been genuine friends, and now we were asking them to put on the hat of a teacher or a trainer, and all of a sudden, the power balance felt weird and they we didn't see much fruit come out of that whereas with this style of engaging around the Bible where everyone is able to hear from God rather than just receive information mm. we're finding it goes further and it impacts further and it allows us to continue to be who we've been for each other so we really encourage people to use that kind of style of discipleship as they help take their friend or their new friend along on the journey. So again with this we'd love to have your stories involved, share those times and those spaces that you're in with others as you help them to lead their friend along on the rest of their spiritual journey. To do that, I'm jumping in. <laughs> you need to grab your phone, <laughs> upload, uh, video yourself mm -hmm. and then upload the video to our Facebook page. Dun, dun, dun. That's it. We really want these different videos to be a resource to you beyond just watching them for the first time. Often we get to a point where we go, oh my gosh, I know that I'm meant to know this but I'm not quite sure where to go from here. And so when you get into that space, I hope that there, there is a resource to actually go, oh my gosh, what do I do now? And to have a look around these resources to find what those next steps are. Absolutely. God's called all of us to make disciples and to make disciples who will make disciples. So let's do it. Yeah, let's do it.